So I saw the film last night. I was really struck by how it has even more comedy and more action than the first one. Was that exciting to you for a sequel? I mean, it was. Yeah, you know, I saw it for the first time two weeks ago, and it's one thing. You know, you do all the dialogue and you see all the storyboards, but you just don't know ultimately how it's going to all come together. And <laughs> there's there are parts of the script where the director's saying, well, you're screaming because you're hanging off the side of a spaceship and you're, you're d doing this and that and the, the people down below are a few hundred yards away. So you're trying to imagine what this whole scenario looks like, but you don't, you don't know until you actually see it. And then you think, oh, well, I'm, I'm glad I, I screamed because it wouldn't make sense otherwise. Right. And did you find yourself, I mean, laughing and, and enjoying the action, I mean. Oh yeah. Yeah, you know what dawned on me too is that I was watching the Minions and I realized that they are the Marx Brothers. They are these physical comedy geniuses. I mean, they're, I, I, they're such a great creation. They're, um, and again, the first one, I, I read about the Minions, I saw what they would look like, but I couldn't really put together their world, like how, how they would interact, how they would interact with Gru. And uh, it's, it, it's kind of remarkable, that, that whole thing, that whole aspect of the movie that sort of took on a life of its own. They got a lot of laughs last oh night. Oh my I'll gosh, they are, well, it's, they are, they're comedic relief within a comedy. You know, they're, they're the funniest thing. They're, they're always funny, you know? They can do almost nothing, just a little look or a little, and they don't even really speak, you know? It, it's all gibberish and you can kind of decipher sort of what they're saying. Um, yeah, they're great. So the first time around we saw Gru trying to be a super villain. This time around he's really trying to be a super dad. Yeah. As a dad yourself, you know, t tell me where we find him in the beginning of this film and... and well, Gru, he's trying to go legit. He, he wants to be a good dad. He knows he has to put his evil ways behind him, so he's, he's come up with a line of jams and jellies that apparently are not very tasty and, and will be an utter failure if he were to market them. Um, so he's, he has a little bit of a dilemma career-wise because he can't be what he was, but he can't deny who he is. Um, and I think it's an interesting sort of subtle nod to parenting as well, because I think as you become a parent, um, at least with our first kid, the focus really becomes them. And it's all about just your child. But what we kind of learned is that in order to be really healthy and, and even better parents is that you have to keep yourself um, energized career-wise. You know, you have to keep that part of yourself alive. And I think Gru is sensing that. You know, he, he can't be a villain, but he needs to be something. And uh, so I think that's sort of an interesting path that he takes in this movie. I love where he, in the beginning of the film, he dresses up as um, Gru Zinkerbell. Yes. Because that, to me, it sort of shows how he's willing to do anything to make sure his girls are happy and having right. fun and he's being like a good dad. T tell me about that scene. and. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's that, that classic parent nightmare of wanting the birthday to be perfect. And when the entertainment doesn't show, in this case, a, a princess, um, he steps in at the last minute and takes the reins and becomes Gru Zinkerbell for his daughter. And it's, it is sweet, you know, and I think, I think parents, I certainly am willing to do anything you know for the sake of my kids and uh even even at a loss of dignity i i think and i think most parents would do the same so the other highlight of the film i think is this partnership you have with lucy mm -hmm. tell me about playing that up with kristen wig and and sort of give me the backstory on what the anti-villain league wants you guys to do well lucy is a agent with the anti-villain league and she recruits Gru to come in and join forces with them because they figure to bring in an ex-villain uh, is the best way to find a current villain because he's already in the mix. He, he, he would be better able to 
infiltrate and to think along the lines of a villain. Um, so in sort of a counterintuitive way, he could be of help to them. And, uh, and this works great for Gru. It's certainly better than creating jams and jellies and because it, it gets him back in the game. And, uh, and he can be part of all the espionage and all of the, the craziness that is inherent in that. So I think it, it's perfect. It's, it's, and it's perfect timing for him, too. Because at this point, all his kids want him to do is go out on dates and find them a, a, a potential mom. And that's a world that he, has, he wants nothing to do with. Um, tell me about Kristen Wiig as Lucy. Well, Kristen Wiig, for starters, is somebody who is, in my opinion, um, never not good. She is always funny. She's always the best thing in anything that she does. I've been a fan since I first saw her, you know, on SNL. And I, I think she's just extraordinary. Um, and an incredibly, I don't, I don't want to let this out of the bag, but a really nice person. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, to, to get to, and we never work together. You, we never, on the movie, I never even hear her dialogue. It's always, we always are taped separately, but um, just keeping her voice in the back of my mind was really helpful because I knew she was going to go all sorts of different ways with it and be really playful with it. And she was she's so good in it. Uh, the theme of dating, you brought it up, how the girls just want you to date and find them a mom. The theme of dating in the movie is really fun because they want you to date and you're trying to not let Margot date. Talk about that as a dad of a, of a young girl. Yeah, I hope I'm not like Gru when it comes to my daughter dating. We're, I know it's around the corner, but it's not there yet. Um, and it's such a cliche, I think, that the dad will be overprotective and that he will scrutinize the potential boyfriend and that I, I, I hope I, at least I'm not that transparent. Um, but I also hope that my kids are raised in, in a way where they respect themselves and they try to make good choices. But I also know that they're going to make bad choices from time to time, and they have to learn from those as well. So there's that fine line between when to let them make the bad choice, knowing that it's a bad choice, and when you have to step up and, and actually protect them from something. So I don't know. I hope I'll be fairly cool. I don't – we'll see. We'll see. Final quick question. What are you most excited for audiences to see on the screen with this? The minions. There is – there's a – there's an – an extension to the world of minions in this movie that I think people will love. It's um, it's kind of an unexpected twist, and uh, I can't, it's the one thing I w I can't wait for my kids to see. They haven't seen it yet, but I I can't wait for them to see what happens with the minions.